Hi guys, this is Will, and for this tutorial I'm going to be doing an animation one on, um, it's just a scout standing up uh, from sitting down on a chair. So, I'm just going to chuck these two things in here. So I'm going to set the scout's uh, rig to biped simple. And if you watch my walk cycle tutorial, then you will see that I um, locked his hands to his pelvis. For this one, I'm not going to do that just yet because there's a part where I want his hands to um, stay roughly near this um, armrest, and I want the yeah I want the hand to stay on the object and not follow his pelvis. So first things first, I'm going to set his first uh, pose. So for this I'm just moving all the parts of his body to um, a sitting position. For the poses you have to um, make them look natural, but also for character animation make them look a bit exaggerated. So I'll, I'll do this with um, character animation rather than real life animation. So for that I'm going to be bending his body quite a bit. I think character animation is a lot more fun than real life animation. Uh, for real life animation, if the company has enough money then they're just going to do um, motion capture. Like for the movie Avatar, they just uh, stuck a bunch of dots on a person, then got the person to act it out, and then they just um, told the computer to, they told the computer model to do exactly what the human did. So there's not like they would have tweaked it a bit to make it look better, but character animation is more fun in my opinion because you're actually doing something. So I'm really going to exaggerate these um, poses here. So I get him. I'm going to put this hand on his lap, just so it doesn't look so symmetrical. So that's my first pose. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go across um, about 10 frames, select the scout in the animation editor, press M, just so now I have um, time before the animation starts, and now I'm going to actually start his next pose. So I'll go to um, the 30th frame, and I'll start with his pelvis, move that forward, and up. Move his hands, Cool, so now if we watch this, he just um, floats up and it looks a bit strange. So now we've got the two poses, I'm going to come in and I'm going to add something in the middle. And what I would imagine him to do is to throw his weight forward here, and that's when he's actually going to stand up. So for the middle pose, I'm going to get his pelvis, set that back down and then I'm going to rotate it forward. I'm going to do the same with all of these. I'm going to set the rotation mode to local, so that means that they all bend on their own axis. And since this is character animation, I'm going to add some anticipation in here. So before he throws himself forward, he's going to bend back. So with all of these uh, bones still selected, I'll put the, tie the playhead in the graph editor to uh, just after halfway, and then 
I'll bend that back. Actually, that's um, a bit too late, so I'll move it forward again. And since I want time before as well, I'm going to select everything. And I'll move this forward so it starts on the 20th frame. I'll select all the keyframes at the start and paste those on the 10th frame. So now he doesn't really do anything. The reason why he's moving there is because some of these are set to uh, spline. And if I set them to linear, then that takes away the movement. So if I put it back to spline, then we can see that it looks like... We'll see the pelvis. No, it's not the pelvis. Here we go. You see this curve here? That's the rotation of the X, so that's that. And the reason why it's like that is because it's taking into consideration the movement of all of this here. So if I was to move this keyframe up, then this curve would go. You can see now that curve is gone because this keyframe is no longer down. But I'll undo that so now it's back there. And I don't actually mind that movement. It kind of gives the animation a bit of life, so he's not just frozen still. Um, I've seen so many animations with Source Filmmaker where they want to, where the animator will want the model to um, just be standing still, but they they don't do any any animation with that, and it it looks really bizarre. Like you have to add some movement in there. So, back to the animation. I still think he takes a bit too long to throw himself forward, so I'm going to grab these keyframes and move them a bit there. But he still looks kind of lifeless when he's doing that. So I want his head to bend back. Maybe not that much. And the timing is um not that good there, so I'll just fix that neck up. Now for the timing. He gets up a bit too slowly. Well, he moves forward a bit too slowly. There. <sighs> I'm going to add in uh, the last pose here for him to be fully standing up straight. So I might as well, let me see what it looks like if I do that. Now I'm just going to delete those keyframes and move uh, delete those keyframes, move the new end pose to where the old one was. It's really annoying how Source Filmmaker lags if you have the bone selected. There's no real change in the viewport because they are hidden anyway. So you have to unselect it and then watch it. But that still looks really lifeless, and I think the reason is because they all they're all bending at the same time. So if I select 
all of these spines and I come to the rotation, the X rotation of each of them, I hold control and click that so I can select each individual um, control. And you see spine 1, if I select this control you can see spine 1 has an asterisk next to it, the rotation does so I know that that's spine 1. So spine 1 is at the bottom and I want spine 1 I want spine 1 to move last, so I want the top one to move first, so if I select these keyframes and I want them to move last, so I move it down then I want The middle one to move second, so I'll move that down as well. I'm going to see what it looks like if I move the pelvis back. And the reason why it looks so stiff is because his neck is moving forward at the same time the rest of his body does. So it makes him look like he's made out of wood or something. And really, the um, smaller joints will take a bit longer to carry forward because that's not where the power is coming from. The power or the weight, the momentum is coming from his body and his head is just following along. So I select his head and his neck and that's the X rotation for them. And I want that to happen later so I'll grab them and I'll move them down here. So now and their rotation is really subtle, so I'll move that just like that. So now you can see it looks like his neck is flipped forward because his body's moving. There we go. And I want him, I want his pelvis to move more forward rather than just going straight up like that. I want about here. I'm looking at this green line here. So that's the movement of the pelvis. You can see that it dips down and then it goes straight up there. But I want it around here. I want it to move forward a bit there. So that would be the X position, and maybe even lift that up a bit there, and I'll set that, I'll leave that like that, because that's uh, set to spline. The next keyframe that I put in here, it's going to take next uh, data into consideration. Copy these, paste them there. Select all of them, spline them out. Go to his pelvis, select the X position. Okay, and since this is, um, character animation. I still want to exaggerate these poses, so I want that, this pose to be a 
bit more exaggerated. And he flicks. Um, you can see, oh god, that's annoying. At the end here, he kind of straightens up a bit too quickly. So I'm just going to drag the end pose and drag that out an extra five frames. So now when I watch that, uh, now it's a bit too slow. That's uh, what a lot of animation is, just little tweaks like that. It looks um, a bit like jelly, but yeah, once again, this, this is a character animation. If you um, watch any of uh, the old Mickey Mouse animations um, from Walt Disney, those movements are really exaggerated. And so the next thing that I want to do here, I'm just going to make his head move when he gets here. I want that to stay down a bit and then flick up. So I'm going to, since his body's moving up here, that means that his head should um, stay down a bit. So I'm going to come a few frames before. So I want it to, I want it to bend down there. So I'm going to come a few frames before, press M. Then I'll go back to where I want it to bend down. I'm just going to move that down. And now, um, you can see the reason why I just did what I did was because I came a few frames before and I put in the keyframe because what that did is it kept the animation at that point how it was because if I didn't stick in that keyframe then this is what would have happened it's exactly the same as deleting it so now you can see when um, I'm going, I'm pressing Control Z, and I'm going back and forth. You can see the curves are changing. So that's what would have happened if this is with the keyframes. This is what I want. This is without. This is what I don't want. You can see that these keyframes. I don't get that same flick of the head. Put them back in there now. I get a bit more of a flick. I'm not sure if you notice, but it's the subtle things that count. And I think that this uh, pelvis movement is a bit too much there. It's um, disturbing me. So I'm just going to stop him from doing that. Okay, that's a bit better. The next thing is the hand. I'm going to work on this. And when you animate, you should always know what your camera angle is going to be for the whole animation because you can see this hand here that doesn't look good at all but if I want the camera to be here no ignore I said that okay well you should always know where the camera is going to be before you animate pretend I said that and only that okay so now I'm just Chucking in some tween animation of his hand here. Here it looks like his hand, yeah, his hand is floating. So I'm just going to fix that up. those frames because the frames before it were unchanged I'm just going to copy the ones that I fixed and I'm just going to paste them there I'm going to do the same here so now you can see what I've done here is the before frame are the, the, the before keys and the after keys they all look good but in between it's uh, not very good so 
what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, without using keyframes, I'm only going to use the tangents to um, change this. So I can see that, that if I move the X position, then that could fix that. So I'm going to come down to the X position here, and I'm going to work on these tangents. So uh, they're already um, weighted, which is good, because that's what I want. So now I want, I can see with that, Normally I just move around to see where it's going to move and then I can tell where I want it to go. So over here, I'm going to set this to weighted. I'm going to drag that out just a bit. Okay. The X looks alright, now it looks like it's just the Z. So I'm going to come to the Z position. Yeah, I might as well just set these to linear and see how that looks. That's almost what I wanted already. So this is the anticipation. That's the follow through. These are rules of animation. And I want his hands to um, straighten out a bit more. There we go. Okay, what else can I do? The chair. I'm going to make the chair move. So I'm going to... I'm going to come to the uh, control of the chair. I'm going to keyframe it there. Keyframe it there. Keyframe it there. Now the chair would move, and it looks like it would... It would move forward a bit about here because you can see he moves forward and the chair would move forward with him and then when it gets to about here I'm going to put a keyframe in because remember before I wanted to stay there so I put a keyframe in here because if I didn't and I want the chair to move back about there now look the chair starts moving before I even want it to. So I want the chair to stay here, so I can put a keyframe in there, and then I'm going to push it back about to there. However, it's moving because of the spline. This is on the X position. Uh, these keyframes are spline, so I'm going to set them to, um, I'm going to set this one to con to linear. I'm going to do the same. I'm going to set that to weighted. Set that to linear. And then I'll set this one to flat so that it has a bit of acceleration. Although that looks a bit too slow. And I want that one flat so it slows down a bit. And I want it to um, rotate just so it doesn't look so symmetrical. But that rotation isn't very good because it stops suddenly. So I'm going to set it to flat. So it has a bit of an ease, but I'm going to extend it out over time a bit longer. And I'll do the same with the movement.
So there we go. That's um about as far as I'm going to do it for now. I could do um a bit more. Like I could tweak his uh, collarbones and stuff, and I could do his other hand. But I think you get enough of the idea from this one. Um, take note of his head. The animation and everything. Um, sometimes it's nice just to do little tweaks with um, the other bones and stuff. Like, I'm not sure if you can see that collarbone even moving, but if I did, imagine if I did that collarbone, the next collarbone, his elbow, uh, I put rotation on his head, and all of that stuff together, that would give a really nice, more natural looking animation. Um, so, when you animate, don't disregard uh, the small parts of the body, because all those small parts moving together will create a lot of movement, and that's what you want. So, um, I hope you enjoyed this. If you, I might even, um, put this file up somewhere so you can come and see it, or you can download it. But, um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Uh, if not, then don't ask. But, um, subscribe, please. Please. And um, share it. If you liked it, then share it. If you know people that... um, Actually, one last thing. His hand here, it's wobbling a little bit before. And the reason is... It's a bit hard to see. Here we go. You can see it better in these ones. These curves here, how they're all like that. What I'm going to do is, I'm, if you have animation like that, and you don't know why, sometimes it's good just to click spline. And if you look at these keyframes here, look at the tangents when I click spline, you can see that they move a bit. So they changed. And so now I don't have the um, moving hand over here. And I'm going to do the same over here. So now his hand isn't shaking around. However, like I said before, it's weird to have something perfectly still. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn that a bit and I might move it just a little bit. And so now it's uh, it looks a bit more natural because no one ever stays perfectly still. It's actually impossible to stay perfectly still. So just adding little things like that will make it look a lot better. So, um, yeah, like I said before, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. And blah, blah, blah. Thank you.